Next on BYU Sports Nation, would a win over Arkansas this Saturday rectify BYU football's loss to Notre Dame? And who is BYU's top receiver right now? Lots of options at this point. Yeah, I like a wealth of options. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, October 13th. Wherever and however you have chosen to connect, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside barbecue pork expert, and that's specifically placed this week, Jerem Jordan. We sure hope so against Arkansas, right? Uh, maybe Cam True can uh, join us in the studio and show us how to cook up some pork. BYU's defense <laughs> and offense her, her, certainly hope to do so as well. On today's show, Matt Jones, not that Matt Jones, but a different Matt Jones, of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette preview Saturday's game, the breakdown of the Ar uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. Real banged up secondary. We'll ask him about it. Women's soccer coach Jennifer Rockwood is in studio ahead of Saturday's big game against one of three unbeaten teams in D1. How about it? Portland. And we've got Big 12 basketball scheduling news, but first, let's roll out some headlines. BYU quarterback Jaron Hall himself gave an update on his health and specifically the status of his shoulder yesterday after very limited practice last week. Practice every day, been back to it. You know, it's, you know, midseason. Everyone gets dinged up. I was dinged up, you know, you know, a couple weeks ago, and, you know, I've been battling through that, but I feel a lot better this week. Have more practice reps, and, you know, I'm confident for this Saturday. All right, better this week, confident for this Saturday. BYU offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick added, Jaron took two of the hardest hits he's had all season against Utah State. No need to schedule that game in the future. That's what I say. I heard from many of you yesterday. Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark told the Associated Press he's had, quote, meaningful, end quote, conversations with television partners ESPN and Fox as the league looks ahead to a new TV deal in 25 when Texas and Oklahoma leave. Quote, there's no timetable, Yormark said. If we can't get to a deal, then the fallback is 16 months from now. But I'm a big fan of ESPN. I'm a big fan of Fox. We're at a point right now where it's important to elevate and amplify our brand. And I think they're the two best partners to do it. Okay. End quote. Also, John Rothstein of CBS Sports reports, a rhyme. The Big 12 will remain at, uh, remain at 18 league games when it has 14 teams starting next season and adds that BYU and Iowa State will be one of the matchups where they will play twice. Okay, a little football uh, TV deal news and some basketball scheduling news. How about it? Game day for 12th ranked BYU women's volleyball at St. Mary's in Moraga, California. The Cougars 13 and 3 this season. They're a perfect 6 and 0 in West Coast Conference play and have beaten the Gales 17 straight times. That's domination. That is domination. Let's go. Midnight Madness for the men and women's basketball teams tonight at the Marriott Center. Doors open at 11 local time. The event starts at 11.30. Some news from Cougars in the NFL, specifically my guy Dax Milne and the Washington Commanders under the Thursday Night Lights on Amazon Prime against the Chicago Bears. Good luck to Dax and Washington. Men and women's tennis both compete in the ITA Mountain Region Championship, which runs through Monday. Paula Mundy is my dad. Mon Mundy. Mundy. Paul Asike will play for Team USA Rugby this Friday in a tune-up match in South Africa against the Toyota Cheetahs mm -hmm. ahead of the November qualifying tournament for the final spot in the Rugby World Cup next year. This is Paul's first match back after suffering a broken hand. Our good luck to Paul as well. You're about oh. to break a hand of a cheetah. He, he might. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. All right. It is time for a bounce back opportunity for BYU football looking to come off that Notre Dame loss and hopefully take care of business at home where the Cougars have been so good against a very, very solid Arkansas team. Jaron, my question for you today and for everybody across BYU Sports Nation is this. Would a win over Arkansas rectify the loss to Notre Dame? Yes. Because the goal was always to split uh, in, the in the big four with uh, Baylor, Oregon, you know, that split, many split, and then uh, Notre Dame and Arkansas. Yeah, were we hoping BYU could somehow pull off 3-1? and one? Could they have won last week and are going for 3-1 and one this week? Yes, but that's not the case. Defend home turf, Arkansas is banged up, so is BYU. It's game seven. It's the start of the second half of the season. Let's go. And this week, by the way, it doesn't matter how BYU plays. They just need to win. I, at this point, don't care about style points against P5s. I do against G5s when you're a 20-plus point favorite at home. Utah State and Wyoming. I do. South Florida, style points mattered. Go down there and win. Although, perhaps that one, we were scared of Florida and opener and whatever. But this team is so experienced that they needed to go win that game. This game, uh, convincingly, 
this game against Arkansas is a, if you win it by any means, that is great. It's a toss-up according to Las Vegas. The line is even. In some cases, Arkansas is like a one-point favorite. Yeah, I'm seeing one and a half in some spots. So this is just a win-this-game situation, even though BYU is trending in a uh, – Less than stellar direction given the last three games. Two wins, but not convincingly, not good enough for the standard. Although maybe the standard should be adjusted for this team. I'm not sure. But if BYU can beat Arkansas and be 5-2 and two with two quality wins in Baylor and the Razorbacks, I like that idea. Yeah. Now, if BYU loses Spence, this is bad. Back-to-back -back losses, that's a streak now. At Liberty is a tougher game than you think. Now BYU is in a precarious position. So... Uh, yes, it would make up for the Notre Dame loss. And yet the Notre Dame loss is still going to sting, but this will make up for it. It will soothe it a bit. For sure. Uh, again, the trend of how BYU has played over the last five weeks has people feeling a little bit of trepidation going into this game. Even though it's at home and BYU yep. has won, what, 16 games in a row at because it's Stadium? And it's in the day, oh no. Okay, so it's an afternoon <laughs> game, but it's back at home in the comforts of Lavelle Edwards Stadium, where BYU recently has been so, so good. Yeah. Um, beating Arkansas, like you said, if it's ugly, doesn't matter. Don't matter. One point, great. Just find a way to beat Arkansas. But you would think, logic would tell you that BYU has to play a better brand of football to beat Arkansas. Than BYU, against Notre Dame? BYU can't show up like they did against Notre Dame or even against Wyoming and Utah State in, eh, wins at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Like, y logic says you got to play a better brand of football. You have to be more sharp, have to be more disciplined. You have to eliminate the quote-unquote stupid mistakes that Kalani Satake was talking about. So, yes, it would rectify the Notre Dame loss because I think it means BYU plays a better brand, better style, better quality of football. Papa John's. If, if they beat Arkansas... Five and two, they have most likely played better football overall. They look better. It feels better. And now you don't feel like doubt is creeping in. This is a huge turning point game for BYU. If you lose back-to-back -back games, you go one and three against the big four, as you pointed out, with Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, and Arkansas. You go one and three, then you're kind of like, ah, okay, who is, is who is BYU? Who is BYU? And frankly, at that point, they have dipped under the expectations that you and I had for BYU at the beginning of the season. We think, hey, nine wins. BYU is capable. This is a nine in win In the regular team. season. In the regular season. Yeah. Nine and three. All of a sudden, you have the three losses. At that point, you're asking BYU to win five in a row. And that's not going to that, happen. That's a big given ask. Given the way. B that's if, a big ask. If BYU loses. Okay. So yeah. if BYU beats Arkansas, right back on track, maybe even a little bit ahead of schedule again because you're five and two going into the back five and feeling like well maybe BYU can win the final five because they should be favored in the back five BYU might not be favored when the game kicks off on Saturday on their home field and for what it's worth I don't believe they will be for what it's worth the two losses that BYU has this year have both been when BYU was an underdog they were a three and a half four point underdog going into Eugene that didn't work out well and the Cougars were a similar underdog going into the Notre Dame, Notre Dame game. Three and a half, four points. This needs to be the reverse. Okay. Where BYU is the dog and wins. BYU's got to figure home. out a way to yes. be the underdog. I know it's weird to think that at home they're an underdog to a team that's lost three games in a row. But here we are because of the way that BYU has played over the last five games. This, this is the reality we're in. So can BYU flip the script there and win a game where they will be a slight underdog on their home field. If they do, yeah, the Notre Dame loss is rectified. BYU is playing a better brand of football, and the Cougars are looking a little bit more optimistically toward the back half of the season. Yeah, it's a huge game for that. Like, if, if BYU loses, all the stuff you just mentioned, BYU wins, hey, feeling better about the Notre Dame loss because you got a quality, you got an SEC win. Again, this is just the third game ever at home against an SEC yes, team. Yes, at that point, you've beaten Baylor and Arkansas. Team. You've beaten two tough nosed. Like, respected yes. programs. And welcome to next year. Because next year, you're going to have a few head-scratching losses against tough teams. Well, maybe they're not head-scratching because they're tough. Where every Next year, I hope BYU goes 5-4 and four in the Big 12. Like, if they do better than that, that'll be great. We're talking about five P5 wins in league where you're going. You're playing tough road games. You're playing tough home games. Welcome to next year already. Okay, topic two. 
Six games in, we haven't seen who we thought we'd see at wide receiver due to injuries, right? It's provided more opportunities for other guys. So, right now, who's BYU's best receiver? I still think it's Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua is BYU's best receiver. Now, I know that there is great <laughs> uh, attention paid to health, right? Like in term, but in terms of just capability, like straight up experience, like big time playmaker, Puka Nakua is the, the biggest playmaker that BYU has. But his health hasn't been there. So this has opened up the opportunity for a few guys that I feel like have been either off the radar or in Keanu Hill's case, the most underappreciated BYU football player to step up and make their case that right now I'm the best receiver because I'm available and I have been making plays for the first six games. So yeah. Keanu Hill's got a case. Puka's the best receiver that BYU has on the roster. Yes. When healthy. I agree. When healthy. But he's not healthy. But Cody Epps, you've said, he's a dude he's now. He's officially. He's a dude. He was my Y Factor pick the last two weeks, and I won with Cody Epps in are my you, Y Factor pick. Are you picks. doing it again? Uh, someone's going to take him. Typically, I pick last, and so they were giving me a hard time. Like, oh, what, Spencer. Why do you pick last? Huh? Because you won? Well, no. Because you uh, you're the sideline guy? Yeah, probably. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I picked last all season long. Really? Yes. But I won, with, Co draft I I won with Cody Epps <laughs> as my Y Factor the last two weeks because. To his credit, he has stepped up. Yeah. And right now, with health and production, by the numbers and by what we have seen on the field, he's the best receiver as currently constituted. Puka Nakua is the most Please talented. Please make it manifest. He's the most talented, Puka Nakua. Cody Epps right now is probably the best receiver to date. Yes, I agree with that take. Um, and for health and strength and daily food, we praise thy name, O Cody Epps, at this point. Is that how the lyric went in the primary? <laughs> Look at the numbers. 25 catches. This blows my leads mind. Leads the team. Five touchdowns leads the team, by the way. 298 receiving a second. Keanu Hill, number one in yards, number two in receptions. What if I told you, oh. uh, is this a 30 for 30? That Braden Cosper would have four times the amount of catches as Puka Nakua halfway through the season. Obviously, injuries to both Puka and Gunner have affected this. Jerem. The bad news is the injury, Spence. The good news is... Look at what the receivers have been able to do in spite of that. For sure. I would have thought, oh, man, we're in trouble. Nope. Chase Roberts has been awesome, but really banged up. Hopefully he plays Saturday. Braden Cosper has waited through two season-ending injuries to get to this point. Cody Epps has waited two years to get to this point. Keanu Hill's waited to be in the top three. Now he's one of the top two receivers on the team in terms of production. The hope is BYU can get everybody healthy. But the reality is, if not, they're just fine. And in a game against Arkansas where their secondary is massively banged up, it's up to Jaron Hall on that injured shoulder. He said he's feeling better. We just heard him. To stretch the field. And we'll talk to Matt Jones coming up about, like, what is that pass defense like for the Razorbacks? And how much of this matchup is BYU's pass offense versus Arkansas's rush uh, offense? So it's going to be an interesting one. A few numbers on Cody. 94.1 uh, receiving grade of 20-plus yards down the field, by the way. He is excellent on deep balls. Four straight games with a touchdown. Five TDs the last four games. That's awesome. He's Look, the middle of the field guy, Jerem. He's BYU's deep threat as well. Like Ke Keanu Hill. Well, Keanu Hill as well. They can, uh, they can Cody, play Cody has made a, He's made a living on yards after catch. Like, he's the dude that just gets lost and they have a hard time tracking down. He's been awesome. Um, uh, uh, so, PFF will give us the grades based on when they've played, okay? What do they have? There you go. Cody Epps is the number one guy on the team right now. It's 79.7. If you don't like PFF, then you don't care. But if you value this, and we do, Cody Epps is the best receiver on the team right now. Chase Roberts right there, Puka, Keanu, Gunner, Braden. Now, four dudes in the 60s, not ideal. Ideally, you get 70-plus from everybody. But Cody is tracking for an 80-plus yard type of grade from PFF, which is excellent. Remember, this dude was a first-team All-American out of high school, USA Today, put up stupid numbers with Bryce Young. He's now flourishing. And the bad news is the injuries have been uh, that have happened, but the good news is these guys have stepped in. When we say next man up, typically that's overused and it's annoying to me. No, truly this room has been that case where Cody Epps goes, okay, Keanu Hill, I'm getting more targets. Brayden Cosper, I'm ready. Huge catch against, what was it, Wyoming uh, to end that first oh, half? sure. Like, who? Brayden, a lot of fans were probably like, who's Brayden Cosper? Brayden Cosper was the number one receiver coming out in 2018 out of the state of Utah. Like, he has waited for this moment and been ready. They're giving the offensive line a push for most experienced and most talented position group. Absolutely. Seriously. And, like, and credit to the wide receivers and to their, their coach, Fessy Satake, which Cody yes. Epps said, 
I, I asked him, I'm like, okay, what's the deal? Like you've taken like this astronomical leap this year. What's the deal? And he said, I have got to give credit to Fessy and to A-Rod. They have put me in the right positions. I have studied like crazy with their tutelage, following their cues. Like it, it has, been, I've been coached up by them. And Fessy's I was, a star. Oh my goodness. Fessy's a star. I, I love that. We walk into next year in the Big 12 confident with the receivers. And tight ends. For sure. And hopefully, uh, Puka Nakua, like, we think he's going to be back next year, right? We were wondering, like, oh, man, if he has a big breakout season, he's probably going to be gone. He's he playing. Go in, he's played in three games. He's going to play. We need more Puka. We need more Puka. We need more Puka. What? Here's what's crazy. Hey, they, Jaron, go ahead and come back next year, too. <laughs> nine through six games. That's not happening. Through six games, nine combined catches between Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney. That's wild. Combined Puka. for 107 yards. These guys Nothing. can go nine for 107. In any game. In an instant. Puka's right? been targeted five times. He's just not played much. And in those games, obviously South Florida comes out in, what, the first quarter? I mean, and then he barely played against Utah State. And then he plays against Notre Dame, but he's targeted twice. That's tough. Uh, more Puka. And he says he's okay. He says he can do everything he wants to do out on the field. So let's see it. You'll know when Puka's fully, fully healthy when he runs a jet sweep. Okay. And the last time he ran a jet sweep, he got injured against Wyoming. And maybe Aaron says, well, you've been injured twice on jet sweeps. So maybe we don't do that. But that's the ultimate flex of health to me. But I could see where, eh, you've been injured twice on that. Let's not do it. Wow. Okay. All things but he's going to 75 if, right there. If Puka's getting healthy and he is healthy, then this is a major, major boost for BYU against a depleted Arkansas secondary, which, as you pointed out, we're going to hear more from Chuck it. more about from Matt Jones coming up in Chuck just a bit. It. All right, our Voice of the Nation question of the day is this. Would a win over Arkansas rectify mm. BYU football's loss to Notre Dame? Jeremy and I both think yes, because it's going to take a better brand of football to beat and Arkansas. You just got to move on, right? You, you have to move on. Come Let's on. Go. It's Come a on. bounce back. Let's go. Kevin Kelly on Facebook says the Notre Dame loss can't be rectified. <laughs> Come on. But a win over Arkansas would get BYU back on track, and the dream of a third straight season of at least 10 wins would still be alive. It's, the, the season is bigger than Notre Dame, people. Yes. Like if BYU beats Arkansas and somehow pulls off a 10-win season, eh, it happened. Are people Whatever. really going to – This like, isn't UMass 2017. Are BYU, no. Are BYU fans really going to be mad about the Notre Dame loss – the moment the clock goes final, if BYU beats Arkansas, it's the week no. after. It's yeah, still a thing. People are still mad. I get it. You're I mad. Get it. You're mad right now. Like we understand that, but like what? you mad, bro? You beat Arkansas, five and two. Five yeah. and two <laughs> against this schedule. Hey, feeling good. Yeah, like, feeling. Maybe cool. that trend's going back in the right direction. Feeling good. Feeling blessed. W five Derb on Instagram. What? Says, <laughs> Rectify the loss to Notre Dame? No. But it's a game that BYU needs to win to meet expectations. Yeah. I think it was reasonable to assume BYU could take the split in these two games. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather have beaten Notre Dame but lost to Arkansas? Because I would have. That would have been a bigger win. Perception is huge oh, man, with Notre I don't know. Dame. I kind of like the home deal that BYU has going right I do now. too, but I also like beating Notre Dame. Like, they didn't come to Provo. They're the Fighting Irish. They got the, the Golden Domers and Rudy you've and touchdown You've already Jesus guaranteed and... your split at that point? You're 5-1. Yeah. 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 BYU's, always, ranked, I'd always BYU's take... ranked number 13 going into this game. I'd take unranked Notre Dame over ranked Arkansas. That's how much I'd love that They're both unranked now, as, <laughs> yes. as, is, as, is, as is Brigham Young. Okay, join Spencer and the rest of the BYU Sports Nation game day crew Saturday. Two-hour breakdown of the Razorbacks and Cougs, 1.30 Eastern on BYU TV. How healthy is K.J. Jefferson, the heralded Arkansas quarterback, dual threat guy, and the Arkansas football team overall? Matt Jones has the answers to that on BYU Sports Nation next. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events. 
With safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dallin Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. I don't want to be the sidekick of the great one-hit wonder Johnny Trey the rest of my life. For once, I want to do things my way. You always wanted your life to be about God. And these days, you're just all about you. Stop running from God. Make things right with your dad. I'm pretty sure you're going to find what you're looking for. And I know along the way I hurt some of you. And for that, I, I wanted to ask if you could please forgive me. We are live in Studio B on a Thursday with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is Matt Jones, who reports for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and he is the host of Whole Hog Radio Podcast. I, we, love, we love the title Tremendous. so much. Matt, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Hey, thanks, guys, for having me. Uh, so we, we would just like to point out that we are very appreciative that the University of Arkansas, unlike Tennessee, did not back out of their mm -hmm. deal with BYU and are actually coming to Provo, of course, the return trip to Arkansas next year. So thanks to you and the Razorbacks for fulfilling your end of the agreement. Well, I can't take any credit for that, but I know <laughs> that uh, they're, they're looking forward to coming out there. You know, they, got to, they had to have this game, uh, BYU. In, in the SEC, you've got this uh, Power 5 mandate. Uh, where you have to play a team either from the Power Five or you have to play one of the independents like BYU, Notre Dame, uh, someone you know of, of that ilk. And uh, they had to have the game, and, and I know they're looking forward to coming out there. It's going to be a fun one that we've looked forward to a long time. Of course, BYU returning this game next <clears> year <throat> in Week 3 in Fayetteville. Let's talk about one of the big storylines for Arkansas right out of the bat. <laughs> Sounds like K.J. Jefferson is back and going to play this week. What's the latest on him? Yep, I think that's true. Uh, he's going to play, you know, uh, they have not confirmed if he was in concussion protocol last week. That's, you know, the general feeling is is that he was, uh, and you know he hit his head late in the the Alabama game, wasn't able to play. He was cleared, didn't practice uh, the week of the Mississippi State game, and didn't play um, that day. Uh, all indications are that he's fine. He's going to play, and it's a different Arkansas offense whenever he's on the field, as you saw against Mississippi State last week. Uh, he he just adds such a, a an element from a you know, a, a dual threat element, I guess, if, if you will. Uh, you know, they've got quarterbacks who can throw, they've got quarterbacks who can run, but they don't have another quarterback who's the all-around package that K.J. Jefferson is. And so uh, I think it's a big deal uh, if he's able to play for Arkansas. You certainly feel a lot better about their chances if he's on the field than if he is not. Matt Jones is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's dive into that K.J. Jefferson angle a little bit more because Arkansas, statistically speaking, has been so run heavy. So, are the Razorbacks more keen on running the ball more with K.J. Jefferson at quarterback compared to somebody else? Yeah, I think they want to run the ball regardless of who the quarterback is. Sam Pittman is a, an old offensive line coach, and, uh, you know, he, he there's a great story about whenever Arkansas's uh, AD and uh, their search committee went to his home in Athens, Georgia the night to uh, you know interview him for the head coaching job. Uh, there were these cocktail napkins on the tables that said, run the damn ball. And <laughs> you know, that's, that's just who he is. Uh, he, he wants to establish the run. And so I don't think it matters who the quarterback is. They've got the SEC's leading rusher right now, a sophomore running back named uh, Rocket Sanders. Um, and uh, he's really good, having a great season. Uh, they've got an offensive line that's experienced. Uh, they've got four starters back from last season, and the, and the fifth player was one who rotated in with them. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it doesn't really matter who the quarterback is. They want to run the ball. I do think that they are a better running team with Jefferson because mm -hmm. of his ability uh, to, you know, run the zone read option. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that, uh, you know, having him in the game does make them a better running team. 
Yeah, he's a big dude, obviously, 6'3", 243. That, that is uh, unique. And BYU had a hard time stopping the run a little bit against Notre Dame. So it's an interesting matchup that, that way. On the defensive side of the ball, Drew Sanders really sticks out at, at, uh, as one of the top sack leaders in the country, leading the SEC. And then Bumper Pools, one of the great names in the game. He's got a gajillion tackles, I think, like 400-plus, right? Um, defensively, mm -hmm. what's Arkansas going to bring to the table? Well, they're beat up defensively right now, and it'll be interesting to see what Barry Odom's game plan is for this BYU game. Uh, when they played Mississippi State last week, they went with a, a game plan where they were going to drop eight uh, in coverage and, and rush three, and they gave the Mississippi State quarterback, Will Rogers, all day to throw the ball and you know just weren't able to get much pressure on him. And that was different than what we had seen from Arkansas the first five weeks. Uh, going into the Mississippi State game, Arkansas led the country, or maybe they were second at this point. They led the country at one point uh, in sacks. They've gotten 23 sacks this season. Uh, so they're a team that can really get after you, uh, you know, from a, a pass rush standpoint. It's just they've got so many injuries right now in the secondary that I think there is some apprehension to leave those guys on an island, so to speak, you know, in man to man coverage. They've got a, a cornerback who I think is pretty good man-to-man -man named Dwight McLaughlin. He transferred into Arkansas from LSU. He's got three interceptions this season. You know, but elsewhere in the secondary, it's it's kind of just uh, it, it, it's a it's a tough tough point in the season right now for Arkansas. They lost Jalen Catalan, who was an All-America safety in their first game against Cincinnati. Mm. Uh, they've since lost another cornerback, Ladarius Bishop, who uh, I don't know if he was a starter, but you know, in the in the secondary, you've got to have a rotation of probably about eight, nine, ten players, and he was certainly in that rotation. And then by halftime of the Mississippi State game last week, they were without their starting nickelback, Miles Slusher. They were without a couple of safeties, Kari Johnson, Jaden Johnson, who were injured in the first half of that game. And you know, there's just not many teams in the country that can overcome losing five front line defensive backs like that. And so I, th I think that's where they are. We'll see how healthy they are on Saturday. Um, but I think, you know, the health of their secondary is really going to determine uh, what they're able to do up front. If they're able to let Drew Sanders loose, uh, he's going to be able to, you know, get some pressure on the quarterback and, and probably make him uncomfortable. That just wasn't the option last week in Starkville. Matt Jones is the host of the Whole Hog Radio podcast. He's on BYU Sports Nation. You've probably already alluded to it uh, in some way, shape, or form with this, the answer to this next question, but let's just go on record here, Matt. In your opinion, what's the number one strength for Arkansas football at this point of the season and the number one question mark if it's not the secondary you just brought up? Well, I think the secondary has got to be the biggest question mark for this team. They're, you know, they're, they're giving up way too many big plays, and you know, for all the yards they've given up, I think they rank – 124th or 127th out of the 131 teams in pass coverage this year. It could be a lot worse. Texas A&M dropped a long pass early in that game. Cincinnati had so many chances to hit deep passes over the top, and their quarterback just had an off day here in Fayetteville in that first game. And so that's the big, you know, that's the big weakness with this team. I think is its um, is its secondary, its pass coverage. If there's a strength with the team. I would say it's probably the running game and and Rocket Sanders and what he's able to do. Uh, you know, he's he's been very consistent this year. I've been real impressed with him. Uh, you know, even against Alabama, he had a 100-yard rushing game. And in four of their six games this year, he's gone for at least 100 yards. Uh, they've got some other running backs who, uh, you know, I think they can rotate in there with him uh, who can have some success. Uh, they've got a, a running back who was their leading rusher last year, Dominic Johnson, who's coming back from a knee injury that he suffered in the Outback Bowl at the end of last season. And, you know, we're still all kind of waiting to see when we're going to see the Dominic Johnson that we saw last year uh, emerge this season. Uh, you know, I don't know that he's quite 100%. He's he's obviously clear to play. I don't know if he's quite 100% to what we saw uh, last year. So I think the running game is a strength. And then, you know, if, if, if I could say 1B a strength, if they are able to let their pass rushers uh, get after the quarterback, if they're not concerned about what's going on in the secondary. Uh, I think that's been a, a big strength of this team this year, too, is its ability to get after the quarterback. And we'll see what Jaron Hall and that injured shoulder can do. Uh, you mentioned the uh, pass defense, 18 passes of 30-plus allowed. That's second worst in FBS. So the run game of Arkansas versus perhaps the pass game of BYU. How are people feeling about Arkansas football right now? Because it was a strong start, nice win against Cincinnati. Weird one with quality FCS team, uh, Missouri State, of course, South Carolina. And then the last three games, of course, have been brutal with A&M, Bama, and Mississippi State. 
Three and three, but it still feels like this is a quality Arkansas team that, as you've chronicled, is pretty banged up. How are people feeling about the Razorbacks? I think they feel pretty good about them. You know, they're concerned about what the, the final record is going to be this season. But if you look at the overall trajectory of the program since Sam Pittman was hired, it's, you know, it's solid. Uh, you know, they're they're going to have to recruit a little bit better. Um, you know, and I, I one of the reasons I think he was hired was because uh, he was an expert recruiter. He was always an ace recruiter, regardless of where he was, Georgia, Arkansas, Tennessee, North Carolina. Uh, throughout his career, he's always been a, a guy that has been able to, you know, build relationships real well in the recruiting trail. And I think that he learned a lot from uh, his time at Georgia with Kirby Smart, uh, just about how to, as he'll tell you, recruit with your hair on fire. You know, it is all about recruiting. They set aside time every day to, you know, make calls to recruits, to write letters to recruits. Um, you know, it's it's all about recruiting with the staff. And, you know, so, but you have to think about where Arkansas came from. They were in a really bad spot whenever Sam Pittman was hired. Uh, they'd gone 2-10 and 10 and 0-8 and eight in the SEC in two consecutive seasons. And, you know, the two years that preceded those two seasons uh, weren't very good either. And so uh, they had the COVID year in there. It's it, There's a lot of, you know, cards that have been stacked against Arkansas. And so for them to have even had a 9-4 and four season last year and be competitive with the type of teams they were competitive with, I think kind of tells you where the program is. You know, they've had a couple of rough weeks here. I think a lot of people probably forget, though, that against Alabama, it was a five-point game in the fourth quarter, and Arkansas kind of had Alabama on the ropes. And their backup quarterback made a 77-yard run and really changed that game. Arkansas never recovered. And then against Mississippi State last week, it's it, it's hard to really um, take a whole lot from that result, given the fact that Arkansas didn't have its starting quarterback, given the fact that they had so many people injured in the secondary. I think the game uh, that they really feel like they let get away was Texas A&M. They, they should have beaten Texas A&M. They outplayed yeah. Texas A&M. Uh, you know, so I think people still feel confident that this team uh, can have a good season. One thing that people look back on is last year, uh, they were four and three after seven games. They could be four and three after Saturday. They could be three and four, but it's a similar situation uh, as last year, <clears throat> same week in the season where they've got their bye week. And then similar to last year, they've got a lot more winnable games on the back end of the schedule than they do on the front. Everybody knew this was going to be a really grueling seven-week stretch for Arkansas, uh, you know, beginning with Cincinnati, ending with BYU, and with a bunch of SEC games in the middle. And they're kind of getting to, you know, to that point where they can finally take their breath. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I think people are, are happy with the, you know, the overall trajectory of the program, even if the last few weeks haven't been what they wanted to see. Matt, we'll finish with this. What's the perception from Arkansas country on BYU football as currently constituted? Well, I can tell you what the perception is from Arkansas's coaching staff, and it's that BYU is a really solid team. You know, 11 wins one year, 10 wins the other, uh, you know, off to a good start this season. And I think, you know, a lot of the principles that BYU is, is built on, you know, being a real tough, solid uh, line of scrimmage type team is, you know, Sam Pittman sees a lot of Arkansas in BYU. And so, uh, you know, it's not a team that, people take lightly. It's not a team that people take for granted how uh, big of a challenge it's going to be. You know, Sam Pippen was talking in the, the preseason, hey, all of this talk is about Cincinnati and rightfully so in the season opener. But, you know, we got a team that you we have to play in week seven that's had 21 wins in the last two years. And so I think they know what kind of challenge is there at BYU. You look at what BYU's done on its home field over the last seven years and all the Power Five teams that it's beaten. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that gets your attention. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough game. And I think, I think BYU has all the respect in the world from Arkansas's side. The line is dead even, according to our friends in the desert. A, a true coin flip game. Matt, we appreciate the insider's advantage on Arkansas and the time you spent with us this morning. Okay. Thank you, guys. Matt Jones works for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette and is the host of the Whole Hog Radio podcast. That is a what we call a complete team breakdown yes, of the that Razorbacks was great. from Matt. Can BYU stretch the field vertically if Arkansas is banged up? And I've, I've seen in some spots, Spence, that Arkansas has become the favorite in this game, which is wild. So that perhaps that has to do with the K.J. Jefferson news of him probably playing based on Sam Pittman's comments on Monday. But, yeah, this is a big game for both. Like, both really need this one, and this is one of the more intriguing non-conference games in week seven here 
uh, in all of college football. So let's get after it. A true turning point game as it pertains to BYU. And, and Arkansas. Arkansas, you know, if they get to 4-3, and three, they're right where they were last year. And as he mentioned, the trajectory of that program is where Arkansas fans want it to be. Yeah, and hopefully it's on the downside uh, from this uh, show's perspective, right? Cougar pregame live gets you ready for BYU and Arkansas Saturday, 1.30 Eastern time. Get you ready for the game as well. Greg, Riley, Mitchell, and Jason. Listen to it on BYU Radio. Yesterday, smoke alarms were going off in the Marriott Center. What? Is this a sign of potentially good things to come for BYU basketball? This is BYU Sports Nation. The beacons are lit! BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realize that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. something nice for you. I see that change on him after that show. It just brightened everybody's day. I can do this. I want to live my life in a way that that show showed me. Welcome to the show. To BYU um, Sports Nation. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> follow it on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and the TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. I will stop uh, talking over you now and welcome everyone back to the all program. Good. All good, man. At least the porty potty didn't show up behind us. <laughs> that was so funny. It's time to whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Uh, Robbie Bosco is hanging out with the Little Rock Touchdown Club this week and said the following. And so when I think of Arkansas as a football team, I think of their massive offensive line and then the speed they've had at running back and the talent that they have. And so we've got to be ready to go or this could be a long game for the Cougs. We don't need KJ to play. <laughs> We're glad about that. We yes. don't play against 250 pound quarterbacks that's in true. Utah too often. That, that is true. That, that can is run true. the ball. So that's going to be a tough one. That is true. What do you make of these comments? I think Robbie's taking some undue heat from BYU fans. Like, the way that it was presented was like, oh, he said BYU's going to be in for a long day against Arkansas. No, he said a hypothetical. If BYU doesn't bring it, they could be in for a long day against a really good Arkansas team with K.J. Jefferson. So I'm going to defend Robbie here a little bit for some of the heat he was taking on social media. He's to it's totally fair. If BYU does not bring it, then yeah, it's going to be a long day for the Cougars against Arkansas. Also, know your audience. They probably paid him to go down there and chat. He's, he's in not going to just Rock. dump on Arkansas. He's, he's in Little Rock, Rock, Arkansas. He's not going to go, all you fools are going down this. No, he's in Little Rock. If he wants to make it out alive, he's going to cater to the audience a little bit. It's all good. He didn't say anything that was no, off. Oh, he played it perfectly. The smoke alarm <laughs> did not play perfectly yesterday in the Marriott Center when it was triggered and went off during Women's Basketball Media Day, or at least the Media Day photo shoot, because of all of the smoke they were using there. Is this foreshadowing, however, Jerem, of 
potential fire season for BYU men's and women's basketball. It could go both ways, Spence. We hope it's a good one <laughs> where this team comes out, uh, you know, a blazing. Uh, but yeah, so, sometimes it happens, you know, and that's why we have alarms just what in if, case. What if they did this like NBA Jam style, like where if a player for BYU hits three threes in a row, the fire like, alarm goes up. The alarm just has to pause the game for a sec. <laughs> that would quell momentum. We don't want that. Just like one though, like woo. they could just play it exactly. in the arena. Yeah. I think that I think that'd be really funny. Yeah. Fire marshals like I have a job to do. The women's soccer coach, Jennifer Rockwood, will join us in a few minutes to preview the matchup with number 14 and unbeaten Portland Saturday night. Which game means more to their team, Spence? Soccer versus Portland or football versus Arkansas? The answer is yes, Jerem. <laughs> both mean a lot. Huge game. And here's why. Because they're both turning point games for these specific BYU teams. Yep. We've already chronicled what it matters, what it means to BYU if they beat Arkansas in football. Now it puts them back on track. They're five and two, and they're pushing toward what fans feel like is an attainable 10-win season. Nine and three. Win a bowl game, you get 10 wins, okay? For women's soccer, if they beat Portland, and I said this earlier this week, they're right back on track to compete for a West Coast Conference championship. Like, if you beat Portland, you beat the team that has not lost all season, you get some of the mojo back, and it only helps BYU's already very strong RPI, which is 27 in spite of a 5-2-5 five, and five record. So, this, it, the answer is yes. Both, both huge turning point games. Yeah, BYU's got to beat Portland at home. you got to defend home field. BYU's got to avoid the ties against the non-Big Four on the road like it had against Pacific and St. Mary's. This team can do this. Uh, no overtime certainly has affected this, which we will talk about with Jim. All right, do you like, as we push on to basketball, an 18-game Big 12 basketball schedule? Yeah, I expected this. We're asking this because John Rossian said BYU's going to play Iowa State twice. Yeah, and, and they'll stick with 18 games. Um, Yes, there will be 14 teams, so you're going to play a lot of people uh, just once. So we hope we get Kansas and Baylor in the Merritt Center here in the first two years and whatnot. But, yeah, I'm fine with it. That's what it uh, – well, it was that in the WCC. It's 16, so you only plays 15 non-con. That will go down to 13 non-con. So you play 13 teams, right, because you're in the 14-team conference. Mm -hmm. So BYU is going to have to play how many teams twice? Is it three if they do an 18-team schedule or 18 games? Is it four? Probably three. Two and a half. Well, how yeah, does that work? I'm trying to know. figure out how many teams they'll have to play twice. That's yeah. why they'll just release the schedule and then we'll play. How about that? Yeah. Okay, we missed the helmet on Puka Nakua and the missionary uni that we put out yesterday that will never ever be used by BYU football. Um, we, we had Holy Sports tweet a picture of, hey, you missed the helmet. Can't forget the helmet. Is it now complete and now is this better? And why is the answer no? <laughs> Unequivocally, no. <laughs> like, I'm kind of angry that we're back at this stage. Wasn't yesterday enough for everyone? That was, it was so good, it was bad. It was so bad, it was good, I mean. Oh, yeah. it's back on the Dude, screen the, again. The cheap bike helmet would be <laughs> the finishing touch there. Yeah, is that a gyro helmet? I have no idea. I didn't have a bike or a car in my mission. I just walked around and buzzed. Catch this week's BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, AFR, all BYU TV sports content, including this program on BYUSN.com. <laughs> I can't get over the bike helmet. Up next, will Brecken Mazingo and BYU women's soccer be able to get things going the right way against the 14th ranked Portland Pilots? We'll talk with Jen Rock with the head coach about the game plan and that overtime situation. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner.
Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, Ooh. quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. From out in America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Telehealth. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked them down pretty quickly. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. It is our pleasure now to welcome in the head coach of BYU women's soccer, yeah. Jennifer Rockwood. Rocking that camo gear, looking sharp, coach. Look at that. Ready for Thank a you. big game yes. against Portland. You can barely see you. <laughs> and do I blend? <laughs> Not in this set. <laughs> nice setting. Uh, really excited for a Portland game. Obviously, they've had a phenomenal season. They're best in, you know, since the, I think, the very first few years we moved into the conference. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup, but, you know, we've had our ups and downs this season, but I think the girls will be ready to go. We've got a great RPI, regardless, and I was just talking about that on the show. And that's yeah. what's nice right now. The yeah. RPI stinks, but it's actually in your favor right now, which has yeah. been a little We surprising. like it when it's in our favor. Yes. It stinks when it doesn't help us out. Generally, sure. it stinks, but yeah. right now it's good. Are you surprised at that number? Well, I mean, you're a little surprised. We, we have five wins, five ties, which is kind of a unique situation. Um, but we've played a really tough schedule. I mean, we've got Alabama, Arkansas, Ohio State. I mean, Alabama and Arkansas, I think Alabama's third in the country right now in RPI and ranking. Um, Arkansas also top 10. I think they're seventh in RPI. Somewhere around there. Ohio State's in the top 20. We have a win against them. Yeah, so. road there you win. Go. There yeah, you yeah. Go. so we, we've played some tough matches for sure, and I think that's definitely helped. Um, it's hard to say how the, how the ties are kind of working into that because uh, I, I don't really know. So You're a huge fan of the ties. Yeah, love the ties. <laughs> <laughs> this brings them more on. Well, we, we were talking on the phone yesterday, like – the no overtime situation just makes it really hard yeah. for better teams mm -hmm. to get a result because mm -hmm. you play less minutes yeah. and it's easier to hang with a team for 90 minutes than it is for 120. Does a team park the bus sometimes in this situation, Jen, against um, you? I think I think we 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 see that um, kind of uh, we've, we've seen that before, but there is more opportunity to do that now. I, I don't think there's a lot of women's coaches that are super happy with this new rule change. Uh, we're hoping that. You know, there's a way maybe we can petition to, it's usually a two-year cycle. Hopefully, we can get it changed back. Mm. Um, because I do, I do think it hurts the game. Um, it does, I think, hurt the better team that, that might be a little bit deeper, that might be able to wear out teams, that might have a bunch of momentum going in. Um, and then, yeah, it's hard to evaluate, you know, come at large bids. You know, uh, soccer is only using really kind of RPI and some head-to-head -head matches, but with 350 teams and lots of different conferences and, and that sort of thing, it, it's hard to take into account you know, these ties. So obviously we have to do our job. It, it is what it is. Um, we've been a bit unfortunate, a bit unlucky. Uh, we've played some really good soccer. This is a really good team. Um, been really impressed with how they've been resilient and bounced back. You get, we've been punched in the gut, it feels like, a few yeah. times because we have played well and, and played well enough, we felt, to get some better results than what our record shows. Six matches left in the regular season. We're down to it, right? Yep. Um, but you have a lot of the tougher matches at home, including Portland mm -hmm. this weekend. Um, two ties in three games to start yeah. WCC play. What kind mm -hmm. of urgency does this team have to win Saturday because you, you need to pile up some nice wins to make the mm -hmm. NCAA tournament? Yeah, the WCC is more competitive this year than it's been in years past, which is a really good thing. I think anything can happen on, on any given weekend. Uh, we're still in the driver's seat right now. Um, obviously need to get a result, uh, a win. On Saturday against Portland is their first, t uh, first place in the conference. Um, other teams that are ahead right now are, are Santa Clara, uh, and Gonzaga, so uh, we get both of those teams at home. Yeah. Um, tough one will be Pepperdine on the road. They're always tough. 
But um, yeah, I, I really like where we are. Like I said, we're still in the driver's seat. We have every everything we've wanted to accomplish this season still ahead of us through the ups and downs of the seasons. Um, you know, but it, it's made us better. Um, I think it's brought the team closer together. Uh, we've been through some different formation changes. Yeah, we did. We, we've tried some different uh, lineup changes. Uh, I think we're pretty settled in and feel really good about where we are right now, and we'll move forward with that. Who do you feel like deserves more credit from a from a I mean, coach's perspective on your roster right now? Mm -hmm. who, who has been playing well that probably doesn't get enough notoriety? Um, I would probably say Lava. Lava Baca. She's uh, done a tremendous job for us as a center back. It's a tough position. We ask a lot of her. Uh, we're a team that plays out of the back, and so usually Lava is the one that touches the ball uh, more than any player on our team. Um, so she's responsible for organizing and keeping a ball to the back of the net, but she's usually the one that also starts all of our attack. Um, wow. Uh, so, yeah, we, we rely on her a lot. And um, just like all of our, you know, experienced players, they, they felt a lot of pressure, I think, coming off of last season. And so I think trying to mentally manage the pressure of that, uh, feeling and, and realizing how to be a leader on the team um, and still play at, at the level uh, that, that you expect from yourselves, but then also try and help those around you. Um, I think she's done a phenomenal job. She has a, a freshman, Izzy, playing right next to her <laughs> and, a, and a goalkeeper that, that, that you know, Sav, this is her first year as a, as a starting keeper. So um, I really think Lava's done a, a tremendous job. She's really been consistent for us these last couple weeks and uh, love uh, the progress that she's making. How long will it be uh, before in women's soccer the opposing team's talking about the advantage of missions and the maturity of, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> in football, it's a story all Don't the time. Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> yeah, you're like, seriously? Yeah, you thought you'd have X amount of keepers? It's such an two. advantage. No, it's Ask not. Olivia Wade how yeah. hard the transition back has been. Yeah. Speaking of, mm -hmm. Offensive Player of the Week, she's going back-to-back yes. -back games. Yes. You're playing her at the attacking mid spot mm -hmm. of the 10. What has changed for her to find the back of the net a little more? Well, she is a great attacking player. She grew up uh, most all of her career. She was a forward. She was a 10. She scored goals. When she came to BYU, um, we needed someone to fill in our sixth slot uh, with our senior graduate. I think we had a four-year starter, Busy Phillips, actually, um, started there. And, and so we needed her. And so she turned into a six. I mean, but she's been an attacking player her whole life. Um, love the way she's playing right now. I, I think she feels more comfortable there. Um, she's had a great week, a couple weeks of practice. She's going to score a lot of goals for us the rest of the season. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Ah, as are we. Yes. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. You know Please. the drill. We've love been doing it. this uh, more Saturday than yes. that. Big game in almost yeah. 10 years. So everybody go to the Arkansas game, yes. cheer on the Cougs, and then come over to yep. the Portland game. Absolutely. Yep. Afterwards, the girls are going to be on fire. I've got seven Saturday family night. members coming over okay. to the soccer game. Awesome. So love it. We'll Let's be there. Doing, we'll do our thing. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, guys. Saturday. 9 Eastern on the BYU TV app, number 14 Portland, one of three unbeaten teams in D1. That's about to end Saturday <laughs> night on Southfield. I love it. Plus, uh, are you aware of who's responsible for all this new drip for BYU football? If not, we're about to update you with a rising shout out. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. 
See new and original content, all for free on the BYU TV app. 10 seasons going from never knowing to finding answers. Wondering how you belong to finding where you fit. 10 seasons of questioning what might have been to embracing a bright future. I was able to put a big piece of my family together. I was getting answers that I had been wondering about. On Relative Race, new beginnings, new adventures, new connections. Stream a new season of Relative Race, season 10. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio app. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast as well. Our question of the day. Will a win over Arkansas rectify BYU football's loss to Notre Dame? And our elite response of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from at Ames Flames on Twitter who says, What's up? BYU can't unlose that game. True. Certainly not. Fact. But beating Arkansas would go a long way in restoring fans' hopes for the rest of the season. Mm. For sure. Restoring hopes for the rest of the season. Yeah, the trend of not playing. I, I get restoring it. Restoring hopes. Like, you know what a synonym for restore is? Rectify. There you go. Well, there you go. Uh, this is the, uh, you know, the restoration of all things, as Peter talked about. Uh, BYU, we didn't know he was talking about BYU football in 2022. But that is the hope that BYU can find something this week that it hasn't had the last couple of weeks, which is just better play overall. Although, it doesn't matter this week. Just win. I don't care how. Yeah, and BYU didn't play a perfect game against Baylor. BYU had a slow start against Baylor, but their energy yeah. was where it needed to be. And they were just more sharp. They I, just I, seemed more sharp. You just don't want it to lead to loss at Liberty, at Boy State, at Stanford. And then it's like, whoa, what happened to this team? That's the fear of the fans right now. For sure, because, yeah. uh, and we're a big part of it, we looked at the talent coming back, the experience. Why wouldn't this be a team that we expected potentially 10-4? Why wouldn't we think that? This is the best preseason team for BYU since 08. Yeah, opportunity knocks against Arkansas on Saturday to restore hope and get things uh, going in the right direction. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give it to our guys down the BYU football equipment staff, specifically Josh Hewitt, who was hired by Billy Nixon. Dr. Billy. Dr. Billy yeah, Nixon. Please respect. And all of the equipment guys that work with them, seemingly day and night, to put in this year's specifically custom uniforms. Like, it's one thing to get a football team ready. It's a hu huge task, right? But now you throw in, like, custom uniforms and custom helmets. Like, they've been working overtime and then some. Really, really cool They're probably stuff. on salary, so no overtime. But um, I get what you're saying. But, yes, uh, I love the creativity. I love. Some people don't like the, uh, what are we, Oregon and Boise State thing? I want us to be. Because, again, they're not catering to 50-year-old white dudes. They're catering to teenage and young 20-year-old players. This is about players. the players. It's about the players, yes. man. It ain't about you or me. It's about them. Yeah, well done to the entire equipment staff. Our thanks to today's guests, Matt Jones and BYU women's soccer coach Jen Rockwood. Sorry to Dennis Pitter, we ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on the social medias. Plus, get all your BYU sports content on BYUSN.com. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Lindsay Lizenby Cutshaw. Let's nice. keep the vibes good with soccer, Hall of right? Famer. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Station. Beat Arkansas, go Cougs!